Okay. My boyfriend gets mad at everything. Mm. Deep breaths, everyone. Mm -hmm. We've all been there. Yeah. Let's trade in that emotional baggage for some carry-on luggage. You know, <laughs> right. a kind packed with helpful advice. Okay. Our source today dives right into helping people in this situation. I like that. And get this. Okay. It suggests anger might not be the real issue. Oh. More like a flashing neon sign pointing to something deeper. Interesting. Yeah. So the source dives right into the why of the anger and encourages direct communication. Ooh, I like that. As a great first step. And I especially like this line. Okay. When he's mad, don't tiptoe around him like he's a sleeping bear. Oh. Be direct. Yeah. Cut through the noise. Love that. That really resonated with me. Right. It's like ditch the interpretive dance of decoding his mood and just ask what's up. Exactly. Speaking of decoding, I once thought my partner was furious because I left a dish by the sink. Uh-oh. Turns out he'd just gotten a barking ticket. Oh, no. And I was collateral damage. Hmm. Direct communication could have saved us both a lot of stress. Exactly. Directness helps you both get on the same page and avoid those unnecessary misunderstandings. For sure. And it plays into the source's next point, too, setting boundaries. Okay. Not in a you can't be angry way. Right. But more like defining what you're comfortable with. So it's less about controlling his anger mm -hmm. and more about protecting your own peace. Yes. Like, honey... I love you, but if you start yelling, I'm teleporting to the nearest coffee shop. Right. The source calls it dodging grenades, which, let's be honest, is a mood in most urban jungles. Oh, for sure. Am I right? It's a relatable image for sure, and it highlights the importance of self-preservation in a relationship. Mm -hmm. You have a right to set boundaries, yep. even if it's just to preserve your own sanity. Okay. What the source is really getting at here is not tolerating verbal or emotional abuse. Right. It's not about him. It's about what you are willing to accept. Right. And to our listener, this begs the question. Yes. What are your non-negotiables? Good question. What behaviors would send you running for that metaphorical coffee shop? That's important to think about. Yeah. Identifying and communicating those boundaries is crucial. Yeah. It's about respecting yourself as much as you respect him. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. And that brings us to what I found most intriguing in the source. It pushes us to understand the boyfriend's anger. Not to excuse it, but to figure out what's fueling the fire. It reminds me of this time. Oh, I love a good story. Hit me with it. Well, I used to misinterpret a friend's silence as anger. I'd be like, did I do something wrong? Are you mad at me? No. Turns out she's just an introvert who needs time to recharge. Hmm. Talk about a communication fail. Classic introvert move. Right. But your story highlights the source's advice. Yeah. Skip the assumptions and ask open-ended questions. I like that. It's like detective work. Yes. But for feelings. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of playing own fear psychologist, try something like, hey, I noticed you seem upset. What's going on? That opens the gland for him to share without feeling cornered. And it also gives you valuable information. So less mind reading, more open dialogue. Got it. Yeah. But what if he clams up or gets defensive? That's where the source gets into tough love territory. Mm -hmm. It talks about enabling behavior, which, spoiler alert, isn't as helpful as it seems. Okay, tough love always makes me think of those reality shows where they ship people off to an island. What does enabling actually look like in this context? Think of it like this constantly smoothing things over or making excuses for his anger might feel like you're keeping the peace, yeah. but you're actually reinforcing the behavior. Right. It's like giving a screaming toddler candy just to shut them up. Hmm. Sure, it works in the short term, but... But you're basically teaching them that tantrums get rewards. So even though it feels counterintuitive, sometimes a little space or a firm boundary is the kindest thing you can do. Precisely. The source is really encouraging accountability, both his and yours. It reminds us that while we might unintentionally trigger his anger sometimes, ultimately he's responsible for managing his own emotions. Okay. We can't be his emotional punching bag. That's a powerful image and a good reminder. We can only control our own actions and reactions, not his. It's like I can offer you a chill pill, but I can't force you to swallow it. Mm -hmm. So we've covered direct communication setting boundaries and trying to understand the root of the anger. Yeah. It's like we're building a relationship toolkit. Mm. But instead of a hammer and nails, right. we've got empathy and honesty. I love that analogy. And speaking of tools, the source offers one more powerful piece of advice. Okay. Self-reflection. 
Ooh. <laughs> Tell me more. It challenges us to ask. Yeah. Am I contributing to the anger in any way? Whoa, that's a tough question. Yeah. It's easy to focus on his behavior, but are we accidentally poking the bear, so to speak? It's not about blame, okay. but awareness. Yeah. Maybe we have communication patterns that trigger his anger. Right. Maybe we haven't clearly communicated our own needs. Okay. The source is encouraging us to take ownership of our part in the dynamic. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. It's like, if I keep leaving dirty dishes by the sink knowing it drives my partner nuts, Right. am I really surprised when he erupts? Exactly. Self-awareness is key. Absolutely. But here's the crucial point the source makes. Okay. Even if we are contributing in some way, yeah. He's ultimately responsible for his own reactions. Mm. We can't control his anger. Okay. Only our own responses to it. Right. We can't be responsible for fixing someone else's emotional baggage. Exactly. That's a one-way ticket to resentment, Phil. Yes. Population onset. And speaking of resentment, mm. the source doesn't sugarcoat the truth. Uh, it basically says if your boyfriend is constantly angry and unwilling to address it well. It might be time to reevaluate the relationship. It's yeah. a tough pill to swallow. But as the source so eloquently puts it, okay, life's too short for drama that doesn't pay off. And scene mic drop moment right there. I love it. So to our listener out there navigating this emotional minefield, remember those key takeaways. Yes. Direct communication. Setting boundaries. Important. And understanding the root of the anger. Right. But also... Don't forget the most important tool of all. What's that? Self-respect. Yes. You deserve to be in a relationship that feels like a safe haven. Absolutely. Not a war zone. And if that safe haven requires a change of address, so to speak, then it might be time to pack your bags and head towards a relationship that truly nourishes your soul. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. Remember, communication is key boundaries are your BFF, and self-respect is your non-negotiable. Until next time, stay curious and keep diving deep.